just as we can define linear transformations, which are functions that take linear combinations to linear combinations, we can also define affine transformations. And the idea is that they take affine combinations to affine combinations, which translates geometrically to it takes lines or hyperplanes to other lines and hyperplanes as well. So the definition of an affine transformation is exactly that. An affine transformation, in this case from Rn to Rm, is a function first and foremost, and I will write my arrows as usual from right to left. So it's a function, let's call it S, such that S of lambda u plus 1 minus lambda v is equal to lambda S of u plus 1 minus lambda S of v for all u and v in Rn and for all lambda in R. And it's a consequence of this definition that if we take any affine transfer, if we take any affine combination of vectors, then S of that affine combination is going to be the affine combination of S applied to each of those vectors. This is a little less obvious than it is if you take linear transformations and you show that it follows from the, the, uh, the, the assumptions of a linear transformation that it takes linear combinations to linear combinations. And the reason it's a little bit slightly more challenging is that if you apply this in a binary fashion, right, if you take two vectors u and v, so you think of this as a function from, let's say, r cross r to the n cross r to the n to r to the m, then in order to apply this here, you have to put parentheses in the appropriate place. But in order to have an affine combination with the appropriate parentheses, you have to be a little bit careful about what your resulting coefficients are. And it's not so easy to see how to do that, but it can be done. And here's the example that I really like to think of when comparing linear transformations to affine transformations and things you might have seen from a while back. Not in my lectures, but in your early learnings of math, perhaps. So if we take the usual equation of the form y of x equals mx plus b, where m and b are both real numbers, and x is a variable, and y is the function of x, then this is an affine transformation from r to r, because it takes a real number r, uh, x, and it gives us another real number. And it's linear. if and only if b equals 0. Linear in the sense of being a linear transformation. So this will help you, perhaps, relate the difference between an affine transformation and a linear one. And we'll later talk about a theorem that relates the two exactly together. In fact, we'll state that theorem now. So the theorem says the following are equivalent for a function, now we're just describing a function, and these conditions are that S is affine, is an affine transformation, so I'm not assuming any linearity, this is just an ordinary function, so S is affine. If I take the function S and subtract s of 0 from it, so if I take s minus s of 0, now this is a function in the sense that if I take any x, the function associated to this is defined by s of x minus s of 0. 
So this is also a function from Rn to Rm. If this is linear and C, there exists an M by N matrix M and a vector B in R M such that S of X equals MX plus B. And the reason I mention this example is precisely because of this theorem, because it allows us to relate linear transfer affine transformations to transformations that we may have seen a long time ago. And I personally think it's instructive to prove this theorem to get a feeling for how affine combinations work. So let's actually prove it. And we'll prove this by proving A implies B implies C implies A. So for the first part of this proof, we're going to define, we, I don't want to keep writing S minus S of 0, so we're going to define L to be this function S minus S of 0. And the goal is to prove that this function is linear. So we have to check the associated conditions for linearity. And before we do that, let's just establish that if we apply 0 to L, if we apply L to 0, then we get exactly 0 because this is S of 0 minus S of 0. So it definitely preserves 0. And we know that this doesn't give us a sufficient condition for linearity, but it's definitely necessary. So second, if we take a coefficient lambda, any real number lambda, and if we take a vector u that's inside of our n, then by this definition, this is s of lambda u minus s of 0. And this is an interesting combination of lambda u and 0. This also equals s of lambda u plus 1 minus lambda of the 0 vector, right? The 0 vector is in the domain of s, and so I can multiply it by any number and I still get 0. And now the interesting thing about this is that this is an affine combination of the vectors u and 0. So that's what this term is, and this just comes along for the ride. Because s is affine, I can take these coefficients out. And this is also an affine combination of itself. So I can write minus lambda s of 0 minus 1 minus lambda s of 0. And so what do we have? We have lambda of s of u in parentheses minus s of 0, which is exactly L of u. And these two terms cancel. So we're left over with lambda L of u when we're done with this calculation. So it's linear in this, it's the first condition of linearity is proven. And then the second condition is if we take a linear combination. This also has to go to a linear combination as well. So let's just use the definition. This is s of u plus v minus s of 0. And now let's draw a picture here because this is going to help. Let's say we have the vector u here and the vector v here. And this is the 0 vector. Now the vector u plus v is somewhere here. Now, can we express u plus v as some convenient affine combination of vectors for which we know what s does to those vectors? Well, if we extend u, so we take combinations of u and combinations of v, then u plus v can be written as an affine combination of some multiple of u and some multiple of v. In fact, it can be written like that in many ways. All I have to do is pick any point here and draw the straight line through this point and u plus v, and then find out what that vector is. Or we can take a simple shortcut and just notice that if we multiply this by 2, this by 2, then those two points, 2u and 2v, 
are on the same line that goes, are on the line that goes through u plus v. And how do I know that? Well, if I take half of this and half of this, I get exactly this. And half and half is an affine combination. So this equals s of 1 half 2u plus 1 half 2v minus s of 0. And because this is an affine combination, we have 1 half s of 2u plus 1 half s of 2v. And now we can also subtract half of s of 0 here minus 1 half s of 0 again. And now 1 half is a common factor here. So this gives us 1 half L of 2u plus 1 half L of 2v. But by the thing we just proved, we know that we can pull out scalars from L. So this gives us L of u plus L of v. And this together proves the linearity. So this is the proof that A implies B, that if we have an affine transformation, we subtract by what it applies to when you plug in 0, then we get a linear transformation. Now the rest of the proof is actually not bad afterwards, because for B implies C. If we have a linear transformation, we already know we have a matrix corresponding to it. So because L is linear, we get an M by M matrix, such that L of x equals M of x equals M times x for all x in the domain of S, which is Rn. So set b to be equal to s of 0. And when we make, when we set that to be that, then since L is s minus s of 0, then we take s equals L plus s0, which is b, then we get, y, then we get the equation of the form s of x equals mx plus b. So that, that's what, how b implies c. And then if we have C to imply A, this is much, much, it's very similar to these kinds of calculations of taking affine combinations. If we take S of, like let's say, lambda U plus 1 minus lambda V, plug that in here, we know M acts in a linear way. This is a matrix. We apply matrix multiplication, distributivity, associativity of uh, all these properties of addition of vectors and scalar multiplication of vectors in our M and we get that S is affine from this assumption. So these three conditions are equivalent for any function from Rn to Rm um, that characterize what it means for a transformation to be affine.